Hello and welcome to Mesmeric Development. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Flax engine and doing a little bit of an editor overview. Um, we're not going to be actually doing anything with it today. We're just going to be kind of showing you what it does or how to use it at least. And then we can get into some more advanced tutorials um, in a little bit. But first I'm just going to call this overview, I guess. Uh, you can select your, um, actually, you can select your folder down here. Um, let me browse for that. We have G. Well, all right. Delete. Delete. Okay, now we can uh, select this folder here. And uh, we can also just call it slash overview. That's fine. I'm going to go with a blank scene for now. All right. Now, once we do that, we have this project here called Overview. We can double click that to open that up. And eventually that will open. You can see it's right here. Um, now we're in the editor. So first thing we have, you see the top buttons up here. Um, these do standard things like save. Um, you can edit stuff, basically. Um, anyways, um, you have the standard undo, redo. You have just some stuff with the scene. You have the game view, play, pause. Um, under tools, we have the profiler here, which is going to be important. You can use the um, FPS here mainly. Um, you also have update time, and you have some um, just draw time, draw time, CPU memory, um, GPU memory. So that's going to be important if you ever want to debug and see how well your game is running, which you will eventually. We also have some um, options here. You can edit stuff. Like you can um, really the main thing to keep in mind here is source code. You can edit if you want to use a different um, editor. You can use like Visual Studio is what I use. Uh, and default is Visual Studio, so I don't know need to change that. But if you have multiple editors, right, you can uh, select the proper one there. Uh, I think you pretty much need to use Visual Studio right now, though, so that's not too important yet, at least. Use Visual Studio with this, Um, I guess is what I should say. Under Windows, standard stuff, just all the windows you can open up here. You can um save the window layout, too. So that's nice. If you want to create a custom window layout and save it, you can do that. And you can also just restore the default window layout there keep that in mind and if you need any help you can see there are some resources up there like discord documentation etc anyways that's what all that stuff does so right now you can see we also have the content folder open and we have this flax in here you don't really need to worry about what's inside of this for now uh you can change it if you need to for the engine but this basically just contains the engine so we don't need to worry about that for your project, you have the content and the source folder in your project folder. So, um, source is really just going to contain scripts. Um, this is because it's a, a Visual Studio source project. So, you could see you could create a C Sharp or a C++ script, and that is um, fine. Basically, if you were to um, open it up, you would see the um, Visual Studio file structure, and the content is not included in that, so you can't actually create a script here. You can see there is no option to create a script, except a visual script, but that's different. Um, it's a visual script and not a C-sharp or C++ thing. Um, anyways, we have also, this is game settings. That should be in the settings folder, but we do have all these settings that come by default. You can change any of these, like if you just double-click them, right? I could change the gravity. I can make it lower. I can make it higher, um, for example, here, but you don't need to worry about that too much for now anyways. Um, what we would need to do if we wanted to uh, see something here, you can see we can't play, we don't have a camera, we can't add in new objects from this, which is called the toolbox over here. Normally you could just drag something in, like this would be dragging in a sphere, or we could drag it into a hierarchy, but that won't work because you need a scene open. A scene is essentially just a collection of objects, so I'm going to create a folder called scenes actually, just for organization's sake, and I'm going to create a new scene. And I'll just call this main. Anyways, now if I open it, you can see this will open up what's called a scene. So this is just going to have a sky, um, floor here by default, and some lighting. What I like to do is actually create a new empty actor called lighting, because uh, just to stay organized again. And you can actually parent things, right? If you've never seen a game engine, that might be a bit of a surprise. But um, basically, if we do lighting, you can go here and drag stuff under lighting. Uh, and it's a drop-down menu now, essentially. And we can do the same for static objects. A static object is essentially just a still object. Uh, so if we go rename, we could rename this to, I guess, static. 
and that's usually pretty good. We can drag the floor under this, and that is um, basically how I like to stay organized. Anyways, um, we have the toolbox, and this has a bunch of things. You can have more lighting stuff in here, so you could add in, let's say you wanted to add in a spotlight, you can do that, and you can kind of just drag it to where you want, um, here, and that's using this tool. You can also snap it if you want to use the snapping tool. You can either select this and hold it. Let's say I want to snap it on 100, right? You can um, either just select that and then it'll snap. But also, if you unselect that and hold control, it will still snap. And the same for snapping goes for the um, rotation and scale buttons, which are both here. But you can also just hit 2 and 3 to hit access those respectively. So I'm going to hit 2 and I'm going to rotate that down. And you can see now I have a spotlight. Next up, you can see we have the um, properties tab here, and this you can use to like change the color, for example, or really any property, and it's going to be different for different things, but you could also change the brightness here, so I maybe want to have a brightness of 10. Now you can see we have that red spotlight, and um, we change that in the properties. Different things are going to have different properties, so that was, that's just a property for a light, obviously. But let's say we wanted to go into the physics, we could add a rigid body. A rigid body basically just enables physics, but here you can see we have different static uh, settings. We would not want this to be static since we would want it to be able to move. But what we could do is we could set it is kinematic. We can set all these settings. We can disable gravity. We can do start on awake. Um, you don't need to know what all those things do yet, but just know that so those things are there under the properties window here. Um, so we have some visual effects here too. Um, anyways, you also have some basic models. So now we can indeed drag in like a cube or something, right? Um, so if we selected this and dragged it up here, you can see. Um, let me just bring it down a little bit. Okay, so now we have this cube. You can see it has this white material. Maybe we don't want that white material. Right, maybe we want a different one. So what we could do is actually create a new folder called materials if we want to create a different material and make it look not white. And we can create a new uh, material here if you wanted to do that, right? I'm just going to call it red because this is going to be a red material. And we can drag out the, from the color node. You can see we have all these nodes here. Right now we just want to change the color. If we go color, this will just create a color node here. And we can, let's just select red. Then we have some other settings. Um, a big one here is cooling mode. You can either make it two-sided. This means that if you're inside of it, you can still see it. Or you can make it um, inverted, which means that you're seeing the inside of it. But if you're on the outside, it won't draw that face. Only if you're on the inside. Or normal, which is just drawing the outside, but not the inside. You usually want to use normal um, for it. So right now, we'll just leave the cool mode to normal. And then there are a bunch of other settings, but we don't really need to worry about those. We hit exit out, we can hit yes to save it, and then to apply, we can just drag it on. So now we have a red cube, you can see we have our spotlight still pointing on it, um, here, and basically that's, um, the system for creating stuff and other things. Now, if you're used to, um, other game engines, um, you would know, like, a component system, and you can add components. Flax is a little bit different in that regard. We don't really have those same components. So let's say we wanted to add a rigid body to this cube, right? There really isn't, um, we, there's nowhere to add the rigid body. Instead, what we need to do is go to physics, drag in the rigid body, then parent the cube to the rigid body, and then, like, if we just want to move this up and um, maybe want to scale the floor now, so that's with the two, we can scale that on the X here. Like that, let me just scale that a little more. Now if we hit play, you'll see that cube drops. Except, it also doesn't go through here, because the cube also doesn't have a collider. So what we would need to do is add on a box collider to that rigid body. And now it has a um, collider, but it's not in the right spot. So what we need to do is add it onto the cube. And we need to um, reset the position on this to zero as well so that we can do that zero zero or that's not true we need to we're doing this wrong we need to set the cubes position to zero anyways 
So if we do that um, to zero, 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 now it has the same position of the rigid body as the rigid body, and we can move the rigid body freely, but we want everything under that rigid body to just have a position of zero. Now you could see that was a little bit weird creating it, just for um, example, now if we uh, do hit play, um, it will work. We, or actually it won't because this floor doesn't have a box collider. Let me just add a box collider to that floor. Now that floor has a box collider, it will work. You could see. So you could see if the object doesn't have a collider, it's just going to go through it, but it works now. Um, but what we can do now is um, if we want to make this process a little bit easier, that was a little bit confusing. So let me just restart. Okay, first off, we know if we want something to be uh, have it collide, if we want to have something be able to collide with something, it needs a box collider. It doesn't need a rigid body, but it at least needs that box collider. So we can add on that box collider. Next off, hey, let's we know we need a rigid body to make something collide. So what we could do is we could drag that in, and I think that looks like a pretty good position for it. We also want to probably have a visual. We want to be able to see it, so we could drag in probably a cube. And we also know that that um, probably needs a collider, so it can collide with things. So we go to physics, box collider, and drag that onto the rigid body. And now you can see that's pretty simple, basically just a component system, only the cube is a component of the rigid body. Um, if you want to think about it like that, we can also add on red material here, or we can try to, I don't know why. Okay, um, I don't know why this isn't going on. There, um, um is it gonna work on this? Yeah. Is it gonna work on this? Nope. It's going to work on this. Alright, anyways, I don't know what's, what, I'm sure that's just a layer right there, whatever that is, but anyways, what we can do now is we can hit play, and you can see it falls down. And we didn't have to go through all the complicated steps. We just had to pair an, a cube to a rigid body and a box collider to it. Um, you can see if we were to delete this, it's just going to fall through the floor. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, know that um, the other things you should know. As you can see, we still have the box collider even though I deleted it. That's because if you make a change in play mode, it doesn't actually apply. It'll apply in play mode, but once you go out of play mode, it's going to uh, revert back to the way it was. Um, and then you have some other systems here. You can create foliage, or you can also create um, terrain. But we are not going to go over those today. Those are a little more advanced. Um, now, going over creating a script, right? If we wanted to create a script, again, what you can do is you could just go, let's go into the game scripts and create a new, uh, you could create a C Sharp or C++ script. I'm just going to create a C Sharp script for now. Um, new C Sharp script. And I'll, yeah, script zero is fine. And we can open this up, and I'm not going to actually create any script, but this generates um, some stuff that we should talk about before we um, go on any further into the tutorial series. Um, first off, you can see we have the project here. We have to open up the folder and actually click on the script that we want to open here, so this, I'd call it script zero. Next up, you can see it has some auto-generated methods. Um, you can these run just when they say they run, and pretty much um, when you think they run. So on start runs when you start, enable runs when the game object is enabled. Um, the enabling is basically just if the game object exists but it's currently disabled, and then you essentially turn it on. And then if you disable it, same thing. Um, you can also use um, the um, public override void on destroy which is similar to on disable but the object still exists if you disabled it if you destroy it that object no longer exists and it's uh, wiped from memory um, and it won't be in the hierarchy so if it's on disable you um, disable an object on disable will be called but that object will still be on the hierarchy um, with on destroy it will not be um, if you want to do on create, that's um, actually not called on create. It's called on dis um, public void override on awake. 
and that's basically just create when you create an object um and you can see it also auto generates the base we don't need that you don't need to worry about what that is right now you can just delete it um if you don't know what that is but anyways those are the methods that you'll be using a lot there are a few more but um things that you should know um on update runs once a frame that means it can be variable like if someone has 144 frames this is going to run 144 times per second but if someone only has 30 frames it's going to run 30 frames per second uh, if you want a method that runs cons a lot but um consistently what you use is void override um void fixed update i put the wrong one in here but anyways it's on fixed update and then we can delete that okay delete this anyways a fixed update is just a physics update so that's going to run i believe it's 50 times per second more than enough but it's not going to vary it's not going to run 244 times per second and it's not going to run 30 times per second it's going to run whatever your physics time update is or however often you have that set to be so we can also inherit right now it's just inheriting from script you can inherit from a few other things um but you can um for now i just want to leave that to script you could also um inherit from like a um scene or no you can't i don't know there are things you can inherit from we won't go over that right now because i don't know all the things that you can inherit from um right now but there are a lot so we will go over that in a future um tutorial but these are the methods that we went over and i think that's pretty much all we need to go over so you should have a pretty good grasp of actually how to navigate around the engine um and how to use it so thanks for watching and goodbye